would use I use my cello to put that. Yeah. Um, unless there's a cello out there that you want. I mean, but yeah, I think usually for bows, um, at least in the past, um, usually, at least what Bob had did the past couple of years is, you know, he says what he plays and then just if you want to play with your cello, okay, so that way people can hear. Okay, and then I can and then, yeah, we'll switch to the bow and so that way there's more control. I guess. Yeah, and then. Um, Okay. Yeah, we're still just a couple minutes, and then Tom is there. He's talking to someone, so but Tom will Tom will announce the the show. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You're uh you're welcome to it wherever. Of course. I will. I won't stop you. Great. <laughs>
Wait about two more minutes. Well, welcome, everybody. It's uh, great having you all here tonight. My name is Tom Metzler, as most of you know, and I'm so pleased to welcome you to our seventh annual American Violin Maker and Bow Maker exhibition and sale. But before we begin, I have to ask if anybody's parked in the church parking lot, because the gate will get closed very soon, and uh, you would be our overnight guest. So there is parking available. Uh, at the lot to the south of our shop if anybody needs to move. I would also like to welcome our audience watching tonight on our Facebook and YouTube live stream. So, welcome. And I'd also like to acknowledge some of the violin makers who actually made the long trek here. Some of, some of the makers flew from the East Coast, uh, the Midwest, Many drove here, so um, all the makers who are here, could you stand up and maybe we could acknowledge you? I know. There's a <laughs> so over the past several years, we've been very proud to watch this event develop into a major showcase of important living violin makers. We have represented some of the finest contemporary instruments in America. And the cellos and bows here tonight are no exception. Every one of the cellos and bows you will hear tonight are available for sale. Some of you may have come uh, tonight to investigate the possibility of a possible purchase. And you'll have the chance after the performance, if you'd like to go to one of our practice rooms and try the instruments and the bows for the, ne the next hour after the performance, you're welcome to do so. Um, the our performer tonight will give you some great insights to the sound from afar that you will not be able to, to gather by playing the instruments yourself. So we consider this a really important uh, event for that purpose. The instruments will be here for the next three months. So if you don't have a chance tonight to try the cellos or the bows, you can make an appointment to come back in the next days or weeks to try them in a more relaxed setting but tonight may be your only opportunity to try the whole collection because it does disperse slowly. The, the instruments and bows will, will sell. We are having high quality audio and video recording done tonight 
uh, by Christian Amundsen and his crew. So you'll be able to revisit these tonal comparisons on our YouTube channel in the, in the very near future. We're pleased, very pleased to have with us tonight a truly great cellist to demonstrate the cellos and bows for us. British cellist Clive Greensmith has been performing around the world since the 1980s and was the cellist of the famed Tokyo String Quartet for many years. And for the last 10 years, he's been professor of cello and chamber music at the Colburn School here in Los Angeles. So let's uh, go ahead and welcome uh, Mr. Greensmith to the stage. <laughs> I'd like to also introduce my daughter, Julia, who will present uh, the instruments one by one. Hello. <laughs> so um, uh, Mr. Greensmith will be demonstrating uh, first some cello bows on his own cello uh, to keep things consistent. So we'd like to begin the evening with a bow by Alessio de Matos. Okay. Shall I trade bows with you? So we have how long for each? We're we'll doing about a minute or so for the bows. For bows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. of my own sound for you just to hear the open strings, which is why I started with Bach. and it's very comfortable in the hand and it, re it returns beautifully. It, it fits beautifully, it moves so well. I like this bow a lot. Wonderful. Thank you so much. 
That was Elicio de Matos from Brazil. And then this next bow is by Thomas Dignan from Boston. Could you tell us a bit about your own cello? Um, yes, this I have several cellos, but the one I'm using right now is by uh, Stefano Gibertoni, and it was made. Um, it's a pandemic cello. It was made uh, two and a half years ago, and um, it's inspired by a Guarneri model from um, owned by the conservatory, the Conservatorio Verdi in in Milan. I've had it since that time, and I, I, the one I play the most actually. <laughs> sensitivity to it I feel like it, it makes me play makes me want to phrase <laughs> and it, it's it's very very nice I didn't try this because <laughs> Mm hmm. 
grooves so nicely. Uh. <laughs> It's a very good question, and we're here without piano or colleagues to play with, so actually we can tell a lot right now, but how will the bow serve you when you're playing in, a, in an ensemble or you're leading a section or if you need to blend or if you're playing with piano? Those, you'll, those characteristics, how it feels and sounds when you're in a real a, 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 a situation where you need to, to really figure out what the bow can do for you. If, if you have to work too hard, or if the bow doesn't have color that you want, or certain pieces that don't work as well, I think in the end, we all lust after the perfect bow. It's like a unicorn, does it exist? <laughs> um, and people will pay vast amounts of money because they think that they're, it, a bow will transform their playing like an instrument. I think a bow is beautiful, but it's a tool, and we have to know how to use it. So a lot of trying out is listening to the way the instrument rings and trying to feel the way the bow might help partner with your way of making sound and with the instrument itself. So sometimes, uh, uh, you know, if you play solo Bach, you might want a, a slightly different bow, of course, from when you play Shostakovich concerto. Um, but I also think there are bows that seem to work well with everything. And, doesn't mean it's heavier or lighter or it's stronger or weaker. It's just mainly balance and the way that it feels that it's part of you, and that it it is it's, it feels like an extension of what you, what you are as a player, and that's that's an indefinable thing. Sometimes you just and well, one telltale sign is that you don't want to stop using it, <laughs> and that you you keep wanting to play more, and that hopefully you, you know you you sound better because the bow inspires you and like the instrument. Um, Oh, this is my book. Yeah, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, um, we're now moving on to cellos, uh, starting with um, a cello by Dan Arlig from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I forgot what I was supposed to play. I, I don't want to play the same thing, you'll get bored. But I do have some similar approach. I'll try some, uh, a little something different first. <laughs>
dimensions are different the way they feel as you sit with them and then the little adjustments you have to make so I'm sorry I'm not going to be perfect <laughs> you can hear that but I'll do my best to bring out what I feel like is in the instrument <laughs> Thank you. 
Next up, we have a cello by Andrew Carruthers from Santa Rosa, California.
Cello by Carlos Funes in San Francisco, California.
we now have a cello by Stephen Lohman in Fair Oaks, California.
No. Okay, sorry. I, I don't, it's the last one I'm getting tired. Uh. <laughs>